Hey, Fabiano here, a Brazilian software engineer who works for Intel and happens to be one of the five elected members of the Kata Containers Architecture Committee. Hello, I'm Francesco Giudici. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I've been working on Kata Containers since 2020. Cool, let's start then. We are here today to tell you all a story that started somewhere around last winter. It was a cold and dark afternoon, and we were trying to map which were the kubectl commands that would work differently depending on the runtime used. And oh, we have found a few issues. The majority of them are fixed now, don't worry. But, but there was one specific question that haunted us for quite a long time. What is the output of kubectl top? What is the output of kubectl top? Well, let me show you that. But before, kubectl top is a command that allows the admin to see the resource consumption for nodes or pods. In our specific case, we are interested on in comparing whether vanilla and kata containers would return exactly the same results to the admin. Now, follow me. As you can see here, we have a simple pod definition that we are going to deploy, using the default container runtime, which is run C. Then, we are also going to deploy a slightly modified version of that, but this time using Kata containers as its runtime. And you can see by the runtime class name set there as Kata. Once those are up and running, we then can compare the output of kubectl top pod which is the same as we expected. It's not always in life that we try something and it simply works. Let's just enjoy this moment, call it a short presentation, unless someone has any question to ask. Does it work on OpenShift? Does it work on OpenShift? Come on. Okay, everyone, it's not time to go yet. You all have to stay for a little bit longer, but not that much though, as there is absolutely no reason for the results to be different on OpenShift. Let me just grab a cluster and show that to you. Same drill as before, but now on OpenShift. Okay, we have exactly the same pod, Again, being deployed using uh, run C as its container runtime. And we're gonna do the same with the Kata containers pod. As you can see here, exactly the same, but with the runtime class name set to Kata. We just deploy it and it's gonna take some time, but you will see, uh, by the moment the pods are up and running, we can just call OC ADM top pods and as you can see, the results are exactly the same. Wait, wait, but wait. Okay, we will have to stay for a little bit longer. I'm wondering here, like what would be causing such a difference on the output? A few things are crossing my mind. The first and the most obvious one being the container engine used. On the plain Kubernetes cluster, I'm using ContainerD, but I have done some tweaks and fixes on the cryo, and I got cryo to show exactly the same output as containerd running on a plain Kubernetes cluster. Having the same tweaks and fixes done on OpenShift cluster, the results are still different and they differ by a lot. The, the only thing that I, that I can think of in order to try to understand this better is following the data. Francesco, uh, hey, hey, uh, could you borrow us your brain a little bit here? Uh, do you happen to have some idea where the data is coming from? Hmm, weird. Okay, give me a few minutes. Let me check. Hey, Fabiano. Hmm, Kubectl top. Okay. KubeCTL top gets the data from the metrics API, which is exposed by the metrics server. The metrics server collects 
pods and continuous data from all the nodes in the cluster, querying the kubelet summary API that is exposed by each node. Let's see how pods and continuous stats are retrieved in each node. The kubelet summary API is feeded by C Advisor. C Advisor is a piece of software that collects a lot of data from the node it runs into. What we are interested in here is that it retrieves the pods and the containers data. It is able to collect the data by directly inspecting the CGroupFS on the host. C Advisor is not a standalone process, but it is embedded in the Kubelet code that runs in each node. To be completely correct, we have to add that C Advisor talks to the container engine. Uh, a container engine specific plugin is needed in C Advisor to allow proper retrieval of the pods and container statistics. The container engine will tell C Advisor uh, the container EDs that are needed to retrieve the correct CGroupFS path, from which uh, it will extract the container's resource usage. Hmm. Then we have a problem, Francesco. Let's take a quick look at Kata containers. And let's do this without going through all the architecture details of the project, because this has been already covered in the past, and this has been already nicely covered in previous editions of this very same conference. What I'm inviting everyone here to do is a simple brainstorm about the problem, taking a quick look on the anatomy of a, the container creation request, and then Put it together with the information that Francesco just gave us. Okay. When a request to create the container hits kubelet, the container engine will then run an instance of Kata Containers runtime, which is also referred as Kata Shin or simply Shin. The Shin will then launch a configured hypervisor like Cloud Hypervisor or KIMU, for instance, and the hypervisor then will create and start a, a virtual machine. Inside this virtual machine, the Kata Containers agent will be started as part of the boot process, and it will then be alive and responsible for the whole lifetime of the container. Let me be crystal clear here the container is running inside the virtual machine. This, my friend, this means that if C Advisor is looking at the Kata container C groups on the host side, C Advisor would only be able to get the information about the shin and the process started by the shin, not about the container itself. And this explains the huge values that we are seeing. However, Francesco, on the Kubernetes, we were getting the pod stats. What was going on there? Yeah, there is something more, Fabiano. The Kubernetes CRI, the container runtime interface that is between the kubelet and the container engine, allows to pass container level data directly from the container engine. In this case, the advisor will still be in charge to collect pod level data. This is exactly what is happening in container D. But let's elaborate a bit more on how the container starts are collected via the CRI. So, as we have just said, the kubelet retrieves the container statistics from the container engine through the CRI. The container engine gets the data from the Katashim, which in turn retrieves the data from the guest OS. Let's recap where the data came from. KubeCTL top gets the data from the metric server. The metric server will collect pod and, col and container statistics from each node in the summary API. In each node, the kubelet 
will be responsible to retrieve the pods and container stats from C advisor. Container stats may also be retrieved directly by the container engine uh, through the CRI. In this case, the container engine will be able to get uh, container statistics directly from the Katashi. Okay, Francesco, I think I get it now. So, on the plain Kubernetes cluster, the stats are being provided by the CRI, while on the OpenShift cluster, the stats are being provided by C Advisor. Okay, but it still leads me to another question. Is there any specific reason why OpenShift decided to, to use the stats from C Advisor? Yeah, it is because of the performance hit of double collection of similar data from the container engine and from C Advisor. But uh, pod level statistics and container level statistics have to inspect the host to perform the data collection. Doing this twice uh, has some performance impact we were able to measure and we don't want to pay. What would be great would be to be able to collect all the metrics uh, in an efficient way. To do this, we need basically one single collector of pod containers and pod metrics that is able to collect also uh, data from inside the VM runtimes. So the idea is to have all passed by the container engine through the CRI, extending what we already have there. We not only have to pass container statistics, but we can add also the pod ones. This is exactly what Peter Hans did in his Kubernetes extension proposal. You know what, Francesco? It would be really, really nice if you could find someone from the Kubernetes side that could actually give us an overview on Peter's guy. Actually, I can help with that. Hi, everyone. My name is Peter Hunt, and I maintain Cryo. I've been part of the upstream effort to make pod and container stats make more sense with the CRI. In short, we saw a couple of problems with the current stats infrastructure. The CRI satisfied some pieces, but those pieces were not complete. The C Advisor filled in the gaps, but we didn't want to just use C Advisor, as it's monolithic and hard to maintain. Plus, the point of the CRI was to abstract out pod and container operations into clear methods. Further, it was not clear which values were coming from the CRI and which from C Advisor. And because both the CRI and C Advisor returned some stats, some expensive operations were duplicated, causing performance issues. To fix this, we're updating the CRI now with more stats. The KEP, or Kubernetes Enhancement Proposal, is called Pod and Container Stats from CRI. And the intention is just that all stats in Kubernetes related to pods and containers should be coming from the CRI instead of a mixture between both. This includes the kubelet stat summary endpoint, which the scheduler uses to make informed decisions about where to put pods, which pod nodes to put a pod on, as well as the C advisor stats endpoint that the metric server pulls its information from, which populates Prometheus. The KEP is currently at alpha stage as of Kubernetes 1.22, and we hope to move it to beta in 1.23 and to graduate it in 1.24. That means in less than a year, hopefully all clusters will get their stats for pods and containers exclusively from the CRI. No more hacky workarounds, only direct information from the runtime through the CRI implementation. Peter, what a nice surprise you see you around in this talk. Thanks for the work done upstream and we are looking forward for the graduation of this guy. It's gonna help Kata containers immensely. And why do I still have your attention and Peter? Uh, Peter is sharing a talk later today with Sasha at 2.30 p.m. UTC. Make sure to pay them a visit. Francesco, now back to you. Thanks, indeed. With everything said, how pods and container metrics enough for Kata? Uh, I think so. We are now, we have reached feature parity. It was not easy 
containers are uh, hidden inside the gas VM of Kata, but we are able to provide the same metrics that we provide for vanilla containers. What do you think, Fabiano? I think you were right, Francesco, and I say this is a good achievement, right? We have just shown the journey that Fabiano and I started on Kata containers and the metrics. A journey that brought us to the point where we reached feature parity with vanilla containers. We have both pod and container metrics available. The reaction we got from the team was not exactly what we expected. We want more data. Hmm. But what else could be provided then? The shin and the hypervisor specific stats? Maybe guest and agent stats? I don't know. We soon realized that luckily someone else upstream had the same name. Do you being from the Kata Containers community has proposed a solution to this? A solution built around Prometheus and that introduce a brand new Kata demo that is called Kata Monitor. Francesco, sorry for the interruption, but before you go ahead and present the, the Kata Monitor, would you mind to just throw some words about the Prometheus? I, I'm not sure if I am that familiar with the, the Prometheus project. Yep, sure, Fabiano. So, okay, we will see both Prometheus and Kata Monitor. Let's start with Prometheus first. Prometheus is the software for matrix collection in Kubernetes. It pulls data over HTTP from endpoints and do this at regular intervals. When it collects the metrics from the endpoints, it attach uh, team data to that. So to have a set of time series data. It allows also to attach to the metrics labels that are pair of key values. Moreover, it allows to uh, query all the data it has using a special uh, query language that is called Prometheus query language. Let's talk now about the new demo, Kata Monitor. Kata Monitor will provide uh, metrics about the Kata sheet, uh, the Kata agent process, the hypervisor, and the guest OS. It will expose all this information in an endpoint to be scraped by Prometheus. There should be an instance of Catamonitor running on each node. And the binary itself will have just few arguments, making it pretty simple to, to be used. In order to better understand the Catametrics, let's have an overview of the architecture. As we have said, Catametrics are built around Prometheus and Catamonitor. Kata monitor, we collect all the kata metrics, expose them in an endpoint that Prometheus will scrape at regular intervals. Kata monitor will be able to retrieve all the kata metrics by, first of all, contacting the container engine, getting the list of the running kata workloads. For each kata workloads, it will contact the uh, associated kata shim on a dedicated socket, that is a metric socket. On that socket, you can get information about the Katashim itself and all those data that the Katashim is able to access. The Katashim, in fact, is connected to the KTA agent that is running in gas kernel. And so it will be able to get also KTA agent, gas to S, hypervisor, and container information. One thing that is worth to, to mention is that Kata Monitor will start collecting all the data 
only when Prometheus will scrape its endpoint. So there will be basically no overhead if Prometheus is not scraping the catamonitor daemon. So we have shown a lot of stuff, it's time to put our hands on it. We have installed an OpenShift cluster with six nodes. Three of them are master nodes, while the other three are worker nodes. I have already installed Kata here using the OpenShift sandboxing containers operator. I haven't deployed any workload yet any user workload, but I have prepared uh, a YAML file for that. Here we have a very simple deployment. There are two replicas of a very simple container based on a Fedora 35 image. It just starts a script saying hello and sleeping for one hour. Of course, the runtime class specified here is Kata, so we will have Kata workloads. The idea of this is just to have simple workloads that will allow us then to retrieve the metrics of Kata. So let's apply this. Okay. All done. Let's see if uh, it is already running. What's it missing? We are done. All right. I have already installed the pieces that are required for catametrics. Uh, that is, I have deployed the catamonitor demo set and the configuration to expose uh, its endpoints to Prometheus. I have deployed them in the container, uh, in the sandbox container operator namespace. So let me show the most interesting part that is the demo set. Set namespace open shift sandbox set containers operator okay as you can see there are three instances and this is exactly what we expected because we have three worker nodes which is where the kata workloads are available okay let's see the specific instances then kubectl get pods namespace Open shift sandbox of containers operator. Okay, we can see the three instances of the Kata monitor running on the three worker nodes. Let's check now our deployment instances. Uh, get pods uh, where they run. Okay, we have two instances. One is running on the worker two, and one on worker zero. So what I want to do is to inspect what's happening inside the worker zero on the Kata monitor instance. It will be this one. So let's pull a simple, uh, simple shell there so the namespace is open shift sandbox is container operator i want to exec on the catamonitor pod i want the uh, bash shell okay we are in so the first thing I would like to check is if there is catamount running. Let's check process number one, command line. Okay, we can see it's like exactly catamonitor. It will pass 
log lab at the back. I put this because I want that the logs to be more verbose. And this is important, the runtime endpoint, which is basically the socket that will allow the communication with the content range. In OpenShift, we have triads, the content range, so the runtime part should be this one. Got a monitor, or we can see the help. We have used log level, we have used runtime endpoint. We have not specified the listening address. By default, it will be the ODP address on the default port 8090. So what we can do here is just to just to scrape manually the, the local endpoint. This is something similar to what Prometheus will do. Matrix endpoint of the catamonitor. Let's see. Yeah, really, a lot of data. A lot of data coming. And yeah, should be pretty big. Many lines. Well, 12,000 lines. Cool, we are getting the data then. Look at the monitor. This is basically what Prometheus will do regularly. All the data will be collected and brought in Prometheus. It is now time to connect the OpenShift console to check uh, the Prometheus metrics there. Let's log in. Here we are. So let's check the workloads. There should be our deployment. Yeah, with the two pods. The two pods are run. Let us see. Everything fine. Okay, you can find the interface to Prometheus under the observe metric section. Here we have the chance to query Prometheus data by using the Prometheus query language. What is handy here is that there is also a nice auto completion feature. If you start typing in the metric name, in our case, let's see if there are the kata metrics. Okay. The fact that we have auto completion working and already showing us some metrics means that Prometheus has scraped the kata monitor data. So it has the kata data. As you see, there are really a lot. No, okay, these are not no more kata related. As we've seen, there are theme data, agent metrics, hypervisor one. Let's look at the guest OS metrics. Maybe let's take the memory related metrics. There are a lot, this is a set of metrics. You can discriminate between them looking at the item label see here this is the active meme info let's look for something more manageable something easy i don't know the i'm free so we can filter it using the query uh, using the prometheus query language by specifying the label item and the value which is mem free okay cool at this point we just get two metrics that is what we expected because we have two pods in our deployment so two metrics one for each pod you see different instance this is the kata monitoring instance from which the metric has been retrieved and different sandbox ID. The value is pretty much the same as expected. We, we have the same container running on similar VMs, so the free memory should be the same. 
here you have a nice graph that is time based because as we said what prometheus does it will scrape at regular intervals kata monitor and attach to that data a timestamp so it will be able to show you how the value how the metrics changes during the time in this case there are not that much changes because the the pods are doing basically nothing just sleeping uh, and they are also basically the same value this is why we don't see the blue line because it's exactly under the yellow one so i think this this gives you an overview of how, how much metrics there are there and how you can easily retrieve the metrics from the Prometheus interface. In order to deploy all the required pieces to get data metrics on your cluster, you will need to have a Kata uh, monitor instance deployed on each kata node. This is easily achieved with a demo set. You will need a service object that will allow you to expose the HTTP kata monitor endpoint and also a service monitor that will allow Prometheus to scrape that endpoint. This is what we had to deploy on the OpenShift cluster of our demo. Well, good news for you. For OpenShift, you will not have to do all this stuff. It will be made already available for you in the forthcoming releases of the OpenShift Sandbox container operator. So you will get all installed automatically. If you want the instruction to install catametric species on your cluster, you can check the upstream documentation. It will guide you uh, step by step. We'll put the link there. Then with what Francesco has showed you, we are closing our story. When we started, we were not even able to get data from QVCT or top. On the way, we have learned a lot about metrics, about Kubernetes itself, about the CRI, about Prometheus, and finally about Catamonic. And we hope, as developers, that we will be able to deliver you all an easy way to consume this whole amount of data you may need for a better observability of your workloads. There is a bunch of other things happening on the Kata Containers ecosystem right now. Improvements all over the place on performance, usability, observability, and of course on the confidential containers aspect as showed yesterday by Christoph and Jakob. We would like to say a big thanks to everyone who attended our talk and a very much special thanks to Peter Hunt and Adel Zaluk for contributing to this talk. You rock! Last but not least, Kata Containers, the upstream project, is available on GitHub and if you want to reach us out, you can do preferably via the Kata Containers Slack, but also on IRC. Join us! We have unlimited amount of fun and work to do together. Thanks all, take care, stay safe.